Hi everyone. I have now come up with the part two of the present series of build an ASP.NET Core web API using ADO.NET and consume with MVC. So in the first part, we have seen that how to build the web API using ASP.NET Core 3.1 using stored procedure that is ADO.NET technology. So I strongly recommend you to please go through that tutorial and come back to this part because this part is entirely built on the work we have done in the first part. So it will be there in the YouTube video description down below the first part as well as is in the cards on the right top corner. And now please subscribe to this channel. I need your help and support and view this tutorial from start till end to get the best value and I have also put the GitHub source on the description. I have now flipped over to Visual Studio and our existing solution which is Web API Core MVC client with one project. So I will add the new project. So click on right click and add new project. So in the add a new project dialog, I will go with the ASP.NET Core web application and then click next. Call this web API consume and click create. And this comes with the .NET Core framework and ASP.NET Core 3.1 which I will go for the 3.1. Although I have got ASP.NET Core 5 installed which is the latest in uh, ASP.NET Core but because we have already started the series in 3.1 I will go with the 3.1 and it is very easy to migrate from 3.1 project built in ASP.NET Core 3.1 ASP.NET Core 5 following a few steps. Okay, so let's get going with the web application model view controller with ASP.NET Core 3.1 selected. Configure for HTTPS and then click on create. So it has already created the project for me with the templates, basic template, and a www root folder which has got the CSS. JS, JavaScript, CSS and these uh, bootstrap libraries with so jQuery. So these will be the serving as the content. So it is already created for me along with the model views and controller folders with some default um, classes. Okay, so we'll discuss them lecture by lecture each of um, these uh, three con um, folders and the www folder in our forthcoming lectures. So in this lecture, we have created the ASP.NET Core MVC application with MVC template model view controller template so that we can consume it as a client for the Web API project also developed in ASP.NET Core 3.1 in the previous section. And here is the www root folder now this is also known as the web root folder and this is the base path for public static static resource files such as style sheets javascript and images so you can see here this is all the css file site.css is within the css folder and images i have created a demo with the images folder it is not by there was by default so i created the images folder by right clicking on this www root and clicking the uh, new folder and I placed an image over there to demo something. Now here you will see that you know JavaScript is also there JavaScript file plus the bootstrap which was installed by default when we created the MVC template and within the bootstrap you have got CSS directory and then the JS directory Java, JavaScript directory and then there is jQuery for client side validation you know jQuery, jQuery validation and jQuery validated, validation unobtrusive, which we'll be um, seeing in a future lecture 
when we talk about the client side and the server side validation now what i want to say is that you uh, i have brought this layout file layout um, this razor file in the shared folder which was automatically created now you can see here that in this markup this link relationship is style sheet and this refers to the tilde tilde slash lib and this tilde refers to this web root okay so you can see that if you consider dub dub root is the web root folder which is uh, tilde then this is tilde is dub dub root and then lib and then bootstrap and then dist and then css and within the css bootstrap dot min uh, css bootstrap dot min dot css bootstrap dot css bootstrap dot min dot css okay and similarly this is css side dot css where the tilde is the you know web root or dub 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 root folder this is one thing and then here also in the validation script partial we have got the reference to the dub dub root by this tilde and then lib you can see there here within the jquery validation folder within this lib folder we have got then dist sub folder and within the dist dist there is jquery dot validate dot min dot js similarly this path now what i intend to show you is you know if we uh, put it as a startup um, startup application set as startup project which i have already done i will again do it and then run this application by iis express and now if i browse to that images home office dot jpeg you can see that the this home office dot jpeg image is served now for serving this another piece in the jigsaw puzzle is this startup file this startup class holds app dot use static file so this is the uh, middleware um, application this i application builder type object and dot use static files this is the one that serves the static files from the web root or the www root now by default static files are served only from the web root directory and its sub directories the web root path defaults to content root slash www root now this is the content root this is the content root this web api consume and within this there is the first level that www root okay and static files are accessible via path relative to the web root which i have already shown so that's about all that i wanted to cover in this lecture on dub 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 root and we have seen that what is the dub 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 root or the web root folder and how the static assets are uh, browsed in the url related to this uh, web root and how you can include the uh, use static file middleware to view the these contents within the content root file So before I start explaining the different, you know, files or different views which are common in the shared folder, the layout.cshtml file it is the common layout for all the views that provides users with a consistent experience as they navigate from page to page. So basically, when you are looking at this shared folder, so this is shared by all the views. This is a common three views layout. validation script partial and error.cshtml now the common html structures in a layout.cshtml file such as scripts and style sheets are also frequently used by many pages within an app all of these shared elements are defined in this layout file like these uh, you can see the style sheets the bootstrap style sheet and the site style sheet and similarly not only the site uh, style sheets but also the javascripts okay so jquery scripts as well as the bootstrap bundle and these uh, layouts reduce the duplicate code in views 
and it sets the title for the page view in the view data dictionary. So where is the view data dictionary? So this is the view data dictionary. So it sets the title for the page view in the view data dictionary. And I've already talked about the links to the static assets such as site and bootstrap style sheets. And it also creates the navigation links for the home and privacy or any other page that you might come up with next. And it renders the body. Okay, it renders the body where it places the contents which it retrieves from the individual views. Now, when you run this application, it renders the home view. So home view is actually, the, this is in this folder, views home, index.cshtml. So when you run this application, you come up with this content on the home page. It'll learn about and this link to this Microsoft um, URL and following which it comes with building web apps with ASP.NET Core. And similarly, this validation script partial, this file contains validation scripts in the form of a partial view. So these are the validation scripts, jquery.validate.min.js and jquery.validate.unobtrusive.min.js and this error.cshtml this renders the error view due to any error and this is this is most of the time customized and this is actually it has got a model also error view model in the models folder it's automatically created for you and uh, if you look into the controllers home controller it actually works together with this action method on the home controller page okay so in this lecture we have seen what the shared folder contains in ASP.NET Core MVC uh, template. In ASP.NET Core application, the code present in this file, viewstart.cshtml, which is in front of you, is going to be executed before the code in the individual view is executed. So you can set the layout property in this file. This is a layout property, okay? It gets or sets the path of your layout page, okay? So because this layout.cshtml is also within this shared folder, so what this does is that the views and slash viewstart.cshtml file, this is this uh, viewstart .cshtml file brings in the views shared and layout. So this is the view shared layout file to each view. The layout property can be used to set a different layout view or set to null if no layout file is to be used. Now let's demonstrate this. So let's make this web API consume as web API consume test and here also the anchor class so these are the tag helpers which will come next in the view imports file so let's change this to test and then run this application i'm running this application again so changing in the layout file has changed this um, title here first of all this title is changed to web api consume test and here also the title has changed to web api consume test that is the anchor and if you click on privacy it will be the same thing so this is globally applied so view start file basically brings on the layout file the the property layout that we have actually written over there this will bring out this layout to be the this path this shared folder view shared folder and it will apply this layout and similarly the view let's close this application and the view this view imports file which is in front of you it is using uh, the at using directive and add tag helper directive so what it does is that this file provides a mechanism to include the directives globally for the razor pages for the cshtml pages so that we don't have to add them individually in each of the pages or each and every page. So at using directive is globally including common namespace 
so that you don't have to include the namespace in each and every view page and add tag helpers uh, are adding these tag helpers this is the built-in library microsoft.aspnetcode.mvc.tag helpers what the tag helpers are they are server side components and they are basically used to perform defined transformation on html elements as they are server side components so they are going to be processed on the server to create and render html elements in the razor files so we have seen that view start and view imports are two special files you can say and uh, the view start file will apply in this case the created in the template that was created when we created the mvc project by applying this layout property and this layout property is actually pointing to the layout file which will apply the layout globally to all the views within the um, application and similarly the view imports will globally import the page directive like at using and add tag helpers there are a few more directives which i am not covering here because i was just interested in letting you an introductory briefing this is the home controller that was automatically generated when we created the web api consume project and it derives from the controller base not the controller base but the controller class it derives from the controller class and this is a base class for the mvc controller with view support now this is in contrast to the controller base class which was the base class for the home controller for the web api because it didn't need any view support so let's recall this one so this was actually getting it from the controller base class in the web api okay but we need the view support and this is the um, default this is not the uh, this is a public constructor with the ilogger instance injected as a dependency but we will not be using this so we'll change this and this has this uh, controller home controller by default it has got three action methods you know index privacy and an error action method so these result return uh, the view which are of i action result type and um, this index and privacy action methods return their corresponding views and the error action method returns an error view model which will be which is in the models folder error view model okay now what are these views contain these views file are sitting nicely within the views home folder index.cshtml and privacy.cshtml now this when we uh, when it generated the application generated the home controller it created it, the views corresponding to these action methods in the views and then it created the home home is the name of the controller so it has assumed this name and this index.cshtml it actually writes to the browser learn about and this um, link this microsoft link build web apps with asp.net core whereas the privacy.cshtml privacy view writes to the uh, browser it sets this title through this view data dictionary and with the title property is set to privacy policy and then on this h1 header it writes this privacy policy and it writes use this page to detail your site's privacy policy so if we run this with the clicking this button on I iis express you'll see what i'm talking right this is the home page and this is the privacy page okay home slash privacy and this is the home page again so it gets um, these html output which is rendered to the browser through this these view files okay and then if there is a runtime exception then it generates the uh, error view through this error view model it it takes the model directive from the error view model which is what i have shown you earlier this is the error view model and then it uh, writes uh, this actually so within a paragraph request id and it gets the request id from the model okay 
but this will all change in our project so in this uh, lecture we have seen the default home controller created within the controllers folder now this models folder was auto generated with an error view module now henceforth as we have seen in the past with the our experience um, generating the web api and all the model classes you know customer customer repository order order repository etc so all these models will henceforth be now sitting in the models folder okay so this models folder is automatically generated when you created this asp.net mvc project template so uh, and all our models will reside here so i have opened my project web api consume and right click on the models folder and click on add class so again the customer class i'll be creating So public class customer and customer class again. So public getters and setters ID, and just for recalling. how this uh, customer table what is the data structure if you have forgotten just let's click quickly and just go to the database and see our customer table and just revise just in case if you feel that we are lost we haven't done the customer table in a while we haven't seen so the these are the columns id name address telephone and email so let's get back to our code and so id and the name so if you click on just prop if you type prop and then tab tab then it automatically creates the public property with an integer so you just change it public string name and then public string address so name address and what were the other fields telephone and email right so again if you have a look name address telephone and email okay um so if you can even expand it and right click and you can see the design view which will be zoomed up version which is easy to view so this is the zoomed up design view id name address telephone and email and then name address telephone and email i'll just copy this over telephone and then email right and then click on save or you can build it so this customer class is ready so namespace web api consume.models so i think at the moment none of these namespaces you know using statements are required so i think it's a good idea that henceforth we'll be deleting with we'll, we'll be cleaning it up every time we build our code every time we leave a page so let's see and then build it once control shift b and see everything is all right or not so build started so you can see build succeeded so we are fine now just indent it a little bit keep it a bit above and then right click again and build the order class so right click add again class
this time it is going to be order class all right so public class order and what was the order table look like so this time then it's going to get to the order table so let's get it to the design view open it in design view so design and it's even simpler with less number of fields just id customer id which was a integer which was the foreign key from the customer table and description and order cost right so id but the next field was customer id and then again description and order cost so description was another n varchar which is equal to string and order cost is money n varchar as opposed to varchar is simply you know it n actually imports it a localization you know this is globalization and localization we are talking about but varchar is also all right if you would like to give in the sql data type so public string description and the final one is this is order cost which order cost is of type money so money is the nearest equivalent is decimal so public decimal and decimal it returns decimal order cost and rebuild by control shift and v again and build succeeded and let me Clean it up. Delete all of these using statements. None of them are required. Again, rebuild it or just save it. Not an issue. So I've already built customer and order models to be used later. Now this is the layout dot CSHTML file that was created when we created the MVC client project with. MVC model view model view and controller template and it has got so many things that we don't require like you know at this moment I have got this site.css and bootstrap.min.css so one of the two is required not both of them and we have got several tag these are known as tag helpers ASP area ASP controller ASP action so and this home and privacy links which are also not required in our case if you look to the completed application in the beginning you will know everything how our application is intended to look and we don't need this footer section okay we don't need the footer section and all these uh, javascript and jQueries it will be not be required till we go to the client side form validation in which case we'll put it back again but at a different place and this portion is the main portion that will stay at render body so what i will do that i will highlight the entire code with control a and delete everything and i will put uh, the code from my clipboard and all you can see is that there is a html template i'll save this this is a again a razor page CSHTML with HTML markup and a bit of C sharp code. So it has got a meta name viewport and content is width is device width. So this is for responsiveness and title is viewback.title, whatever it gets from the viewback dynamically. Okay. So because viewback is a dynamic view data dictionary and it still retains the library 
lib slash bootstrap slash dist slash css bootstrap mint dot js so bootstrap mint dot js is here you know um, so this is our bootstrap dot mint dot css within the bootstrap dot css folder okay so this is the minimalistic bootstrap css file and render body section as i have told you in the layout file video that it renders the body of the view which is calling this layout file and that's it now in house cleaning what i used to want to do is i will just get rid of this error view model which is not required for this project and we'll delete this and neither we have this require this error dot csh table error uh, view so i will just delete this as well so after having deleted this as i have told you in one of the lectures that you know we'll get rid of some of these uh, um, using statements some of these libraries which are no more used so first we we'll go to the customer class we'll see there for the housekeeping everything is fine there is no uh, using statement used at all and it is still building it's working all right and then i will go for this index.cshtml this is the view file so it's not using any razor uh, any using statement and then program class everything is being used in the program class or not no you have got this some of these unused using statements in gray if you wait for a few seconds it will become gray if it is not getting used and get rid of them and what else now let's shift our attention to startup class and there are a lot of things that are not getting used so first of all i will configure the startup class and then accordingly do the cleaning i will not be requiring this public constructor with i configuration object injected to it as a dependency injection so we will get rid of this entire section and this part is configure services it's already calling this add controllers with views and in the um, i service collection it adds the add controllers with views which does what if you read it adds services for the controllers to the specified i service collection okay and microsoft is writing this is the default command use this method to add services to the container so that's in general anyway because we are using controllers with views now this part is all right if the environment is development environment app dot use developer exception page you use the developer exception page else now i've got rid of this error view so i will just get rid of this part as well and this is okay app dot use static files all right and i will use this middleware as as well app dot use routing and i don't have any authorization configured so this is having no uh, authentication or authorization so i will get rid of this part and app dot use endpoints so this is with default the pattern is the uh, controller the default controller will be mapped and uh, in this case it is the home controller whenever you start the application comes up with the home controller and the index action method with id optional okay so if we go to the home controller again so this is the home controller and index method and it will return the view with or without the so it is not requiring the id so this id parameter is an optional parameter so now let's build this application with the control shift and b combination control shift and b to see if everything is all right it's still building after this housekeeping and let's as you can see the build is succeeded uh, it is 
objecting here type or namespace error view model could not be found so okay so i will also get rid of this action method error it's not required and rebuild again control shift v again and the application build is succeeded so we are fine so in this lecture we saw how we could do some housekeeping do some indenting and remove the unused using statements and also we configured the startup class to actually take up our controllers with views and we removed some of the unnecessary middlewares in the configure method So all I need to do is to just have this index view and no privacy, privacy view is not required and before that I don't need to inject the logger. Okay, and I'll get rid of this privacy, action method privacy and all I need is this index action method which returns a view which we'll create later. And as you can see that it is only using this Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.MVC uh, library and all the other libraries or using statements are not used at all. And I will this build this application, Control Shift B again to ensure that everything is hunky dory, everything is working fine. So build succeeded. So I am fine in this lecture we have actually used the we have modified the home controller to be later used as a startup controller basically. So let's let me close all of the tabs first to clean it up to close all tabs and it is asking me to save okay save and then I'll right click on WebAPI Consume Project, which is our present MVC client project and manage NuGet packages. Highlight and right click and get to the NuGet packages and no packages are currently installed. So no packages found. So I have to install three packages. So first one is Microsoft dot Visual Studio on top it is automatically suggesting Microsoft dot Visual Studio dot web dot code generation dot design. Okay, I will browse for this. So I will click the install button, but that latest table is 500, which is I guess for ASP.NET Core 5 or ASP.NET 5. So I will go for the latest in the 3.1 version, 3.1.4 and install it. So click on I accept in the license acceptance. And it is installing the new good package. You can see over here in the output window and successfully installed. Okay. So on this install tab I should now find this as installed all right and then next one that I have to look for is newtonsoft.json so if I start writing n the automatically it is coming newtonsoft.json and latest table 1203 I think we can go for this latest table because it doesn't specify that it is um, only compatible for ASP.NET 5. So click on install. So it has already installed. You can see that uninstall button is available. So it is already installed and you can check over here. So newtonsoft.json. The third and last one that I need to install is system.data.sql client. So let's search for it this. dot data dot 
SQL client. So it is not finding anything. So this will be actually system. Let's type over here. So on top, and I will click on install. The latest stable version is 4.8.2. So this gives me the license acceptance which I click on accept and it is installing this package. Now we can see here that I have all of these three essential NuGet packages that I set out to install for this MVC client project, project are installed successfully. So in this lecture I have installed three essential NuGet packages to get going with this client. Now we have got a simple template uh, view data title home page. Now let's make this as index. You can keep it as home page doesn't worry me too much and here instead of welcome let's also write this as index okay and rather than uh, you will get rid of this part okay and instead uh, let me write it in an h2 header okay H2 header make sure your API project is running in an anchor tag and anchor and within anchor end anchor I will just delete this control V and then This is a link that I am creating, which is not there at the moment, but it will be eventually there when we create the customer controller. Okay, so this H2 will be outside header and H2 tag will be outside the link and here I will write click here. click here all right and I don't need the div class over here just keep it simple you don't need to give any class over here and control s to save the project to save the file and then target blank attribute now this target blank attribute as you might be knowing if you are coming from an HTML background that it will open this customer page in a new window rather than occupy the same space as the home page it, it will not replace the home page but it will open the customer in a new page so in this lecture we have seen how to edit the index view which was automatically created when you generated the project with the MVC template to render a view that is according to our needs. So 
on the Visual Studio, I'll have to right click the controller folder and add controller So MVC controller empty, I'll go for the empty controller. So add MVC controller empty. So I'll give it a name, customer controller. Okay. So this public class customer controller, it is derived from controller base. So public I action result index. Now I will make it an async task. This is asynchronous programming and task on I action result. and task on i action result and call this this is index method index action method and returns a view right now i have to write this action method at the moment let's comment this out now i'll have to start with the list of customer generic list of customer now in order to take customer i'll have to get the models folder okay so click on potential fix it will automatically use the using statement okay so using web api consume dot models so this has been added okay so list of customer and i will call this either customers is all right but i will call this customer list is new list of customer so customer list is an object of customer type of list of customer type rather okay so using statement now again using This will be a variable HTTP client. So for this controller, I have to use the HTTP client class. Var HTTP client equals new HTTP client. And for that, I have to use another namespace and i'll get it from this light bulb icon so this is system.net.http okay this has the http client type within this library so within the using statement outside the using statement i'll use another so this outer using statement will get an http client object which is now being used within an inner using statement where this variable response and I will explain everything await on this HTTP client I will make use of this HTTP client that I have created above dot there is a method called get async and this method gets the response asynchronously from the web API okay so the web api url is so how did i get the web api url so i have got the ssl the https as well as without the http https this is a secure https and with the enable ssl so let let me use this one so i got it from the right clicking light right clicking the web api project and clicking on properties so this is the web api project properties i got this so enable ssl 
and I, there is another way of getting this web API uh, from the properties and launch settings.json which also gives the both the HTTP as well as HTTPS uh, the SSL port 44395 and the, without the SSL this is 51334 let's use this port okay so now let's get back to work again so https colon front slash front slash localhost colon 44395 front slash api and then customer okay customer and then following the using statement is a pair of uh, curly braces and then I will initialize another variable string API response now this will suggest that this is a response from the API API response equals now await response that is the response from the API dot content this is a content property gets or sets the content of a HTTP response message dot read as there is a read as string async okay so this will read the API response asynchronously and write it to the API response string and then customer list will be the list of customer that I initialized will actually deserialize the, this object you know with the usage of JSON convert so JSON JSON convert now for this JSON convert I need to use a namespace Newton's of dot JSON which we have already installed as a NuGet package so JSON convert dot deserialize object okay it deserializes the JSON to the specified dot net type okay so it deserializes the JSON to back to the object so serialization is to convert an object of any type to JSON and deserialize the opposite process the reverse of serialization so this is the list of customer deserialize the object to become list of customer and this what it will be deserializing the API response okay so API response string it will be deserializing to get the customer back okay so now let's come out of this outside using statement and then return view now instead of return view empty I will return view the customer list okay so that's it get rid of this indent it a little and then build the application with control shift b now build succeeded so i have had the index action method of the customer controller already in place and in the next lecture we'll be building the view for this index so in this lecture we have created the customer controller and put the index action method in this and build the application so i have got this index action method which i built last time in the previous lecture and i will right click and click click on add view 
so i will go for razor view empty so on the add new item it comes up with this index.cshtml marked already and click on add and it will create the view for me the basic view and i'll get rid of this code and copy it from the code on my clipboard just to save a lot of time and now i will start explaining now this act model let's start from the top this add model directive provides a way to indicate you want to use strongly typed classes within our view files okay so strongly typed means customer is a strongly typed view because it is written c sharp and c sharp is a strongly typed language so strongly typed class okay strongly typed model class and then this act layout and this entire line of code what it means it gets the path of the layout file and add the title all customers to the dynamic dictionary collection known as the view bag all right and then these bunch of lines what they do is they point to the controller action methods add customer so this is an asp action and this is also an asp action these are action methods which are not there at the moment so these lines point to the controller action methods add customer and get customer which are invoked when you click the add customer and get customer links so these are anchors or links so i'll i'm yet to write the add customer and get customer uh, action methods in the customer controllers which will come eventually in the next few lectures in the upcoming lectures now next a table now this is the table with a bootstrap class is formed with a table head having a row with heading id name address telephone number that is all properties of the customer model now within the table body a for each loop is initiated where the customer model is iterated over each of these property values and it is evaluated and rendered as different table cells within one table row okay so and a separate table cell then next we come to this code block for this table cell so a separate table cell with a link that invokes the update customer action method with the customer id as the route id and an image is then rendered within this row in the same tr or table row finally this is the table cell that invokes the delete customer action method with a hidden type input or hidden input that stores the value of the customer id with the name id with the, this name id and an image this is the image are also rendered within the same row now this these two action methods are also going to be written in the going to be shown or walked through in the upcoming videos and finally this is the link to redirect to the order page is formed this is the link to redirect to the order page go to order page is formed so that's all about the index view for this index action method right so now is the time to show because i've got the index view as well as the index action method i can click on the start link to show you the list of all customers so let us see i have clicked the start button on top to start the application i am still waiting for the browser to be rendered with the two applications web api as well as this client mvc application both are started simultaneously now you can see that the api application is running api running that is the indication and this is the mvc application client and if you click on here click here and you get the customers so we have got this three customer at the moment and you've got this add customer button you've got this get customer button and you've got this go to order page 
all of these are links but you know they are formed with button classes so they look like button so at the moment i cannot update i cannot delete because these are upcoming functionality in the next few lectures so in this lecture we have successfully built and demonstrated the index view for the index action method of the customer controller now back to the visual studio and first of all i will write the http get action method with http get so http get and public it will re return a view result type so view result view result object and i will name it get customer and it is parameterless it doesn't it will not accept any parameter it will just return a view customer view get customer view return view and that's it and if i forget to write http get that's fine because by default the http verb is http get but it's always a good practice to use the http verb explicitly now next is our http post http select the post and i will copy this line because i will name the action method exactly the same with a different over overload so with an id okay so i will just give it an integer id as a parameter and then the rest of the body now the main reason to name the action method the same as the http get Uh, the post action method to be named as the same so that when it comes to view we can use the same view with a minor modification so that the when the user is shown a form he can submit the form with a customer id and get the result back on the same form rather than to be redirected to another form okay that makes the viewer experience much better all right so having said that i will start writing the code and for this i will actually copy the code from the top and then change the bits so i think this is a good approach because it saves a lot of time typing all right so here there is a difference though that i don't need any list of customer but i need just a single customer so change the bits and make it customer and then new customer right and then this part is very similar now the first thing that you need to again change is that you know if you look into the squiggly lines i have done it intentionally it says that it uh, the await operator can only be used within an async method okay consider marking this method with the async so i actually wanted to show you that this is the kind of error that you might get if you forget to write to make this an async method and yet use the await so async task and this will be an i action result type task on an i action result and then it takes care of this await keyword all right because we have made it async and it returns a task with of generic type i action result okay of type basically type i action result not a generic type so now having written this part i'll have to make another change so i'll have to append i have to make use of this id okay so i'll just append this id at the end and put a front slash 
so that it can be concatenated and then save it and instead of this customer list i will make it customer all right and then return view this customer and that's basically done the only one thing left is that i have actually to make this also a customer object rather than a list right this is expected right so this is just a customer that is getting returned instead of a list of customer in the index action method and if i build this application now control shift b it should be okay if there is no broken piece so it's always a good idea good practice to build it when you have achieved some milestone now you can see the build succeeded so in this lecture we have basically written the get customer action methods one of http get type another of post type both with the same name so that we can actually do with one view so that when you are given a form when a user is given a form and if he submits with a valid customer id he will get a customer return back on the same form and if the customer doesn't exist it will accordingly tell him so see you in the next lecture so i can right click any of these two action methods http get or http post because they are same name so it will create an empty controller with this and it will be given the same name so click on add view razor view empty and click on add so get customer and it will take the css html extension by itself and let's get rid of the code and instead paste this code that i have on my clipboard okay and i will start explaining so this is the model customer is the model again and the layout is again the shared layout file and view back dot title is dynamically it will allocate a title get customer by id okay and this h2 header is actually it's a backlink it takes it back to the previous page that is and which page it will be taking you to it will be index page again which gives you the list of all the customers okay and this action method is post because i'll be posting the form to be conditioned to be actually handled by the get uh, customer post action method which takes in an input id and returns the response from the web api and deserializes the customer object the json object to return a customer and render it to the view that's the whole idea okay so here it again gets the label of id and takes an input or you know input text box and a submit button which is marked get customer and again if the it returns a non null customer object and if the customer id is not zero that means the id is present okay then it forms a table with the table head with these header columns id name address telephone email basically these are all the properties or fields of the customer model right and in the t body in a uh, table row on different table columns it evaluates the it gets the id name address telephone email values from this model and renders it that's if the id is present if the id is not equal to zero and if the id is not present it will take the id as zero and it will write to the browser the customer with the searched id doesn't exist so that's all about this explanation and let's click on start button to see the application running so i have put these two applications side by side this is the mvc application this is the api application and if i click here it will it should bring me the customer list okay if i get a uh, i have got all the customers and if you see that there are lots of re return results with I let's try any of these IDs. Say one zero two four. Okay, so.
So customer ID 1024 and get the customer and we get the customer right and if I wish to get a customer with an imaginary ID which is not existing let's try 234 and get the customer the customer with the searched ID doesn't exist that is what is written from the web API and it nicely formats the response and shows it to the browser so that's all for this lecture today and in this lecture we have seen how to create the get customer view and post it with the post request from the action method and uh, so that the form the view returns the response back to the from the web api to the browser and shows it to the user so the model validation is actually it refers to the action when the form data is posted to the controller action the action is automatically mapped to the action parameter by the model binder now the model needs to be validated for correctness these validations can be done at the client side before sending data to the server or at the server side when the data is received from the client the client side validation is important because of the better user experience while the server side validation should ensure that invalid data doesn't enter the system okay so let's first i'll have to uh, go work on the models the customer folder customer.cs customer model and what i have to do is i have to use a namespace System dot component model dot data annotations. So just follow me, and I will make everything clear. Now, ID doesn't need to be validated because ID field is anyway null is not accepted. It will be auto generating on the database on the SQL Server. So I don't need to validate the ID. It cannot get away without the ID anyway. So the other fields that are not uh, that are null id is non null that's why the validation is not required but other field are null so, so in order to check that you know the user cannot just get away with not entering any um, valid or any uh, entry on the form fields and get can submit to the servers submit the form so that that is um, what is prevented by this server side validation so first required error message i can just put a, a custom message so this because this is a name field please put a name and then address so I am keeping it just simple. The error message will be, please put a name and similarly for other fields. Because if I don't put an error message, it will still be required. But in that case, it will be a built-in error message. Something like, you know, name field is required or address field is required like that. So I can just customize that message to be more friendly. Okay, so please put address. Here, just to validate because telephone was a varchar or n varchar on the database, and uh, that means it is the string equivalent is required on the C sharp side. So, it I will have to put a message something like that. Please put a valid general expression and uh, general message say. A valid 10 digit telephone number which is a local cell phone number mobile number and then i'll put another 
attribute that is a regular expression attribute So I'll come to that in a bit. Regular expression. And that regular expression will be x on my clipboard. Now this regular expression C is valid, it's a 10 digit any 10 digit number and which is a general number for a local uh, mobile cell phone okay finally the validation message and the regular expression for validating the email field please put a valid email and the regular expression is this that it has to be in the email format okay so a b at the rate of c dot c or c dot com or something like that abc at hotmail.com or bcd at gmail.com like that so this regular expression validates that email okay we have already done the cust uh, yeah, validation attributes for the customer model now i have taken out my project mvc client so web api consume and i'll make it http get work HTTP get and it will be a public view result view result type and I will call this add customer with action method which what do you expect this to return this view result will be a simple form it will be returning a form a form which is not filled this just has the form field so it will just return a plain view right so why it is saying this to be like return so I have omitted the return that's why it was not getting a view return okay so return view so next is the same add customer method with customer being entered as a parameter to this method then it will be a form which is posted to the server so this will be http post verb it will be decorated with so http post and this time it will be returning a public it will be returning an async task on i action result and this will again be called add customer and it will take accept a customer as a parameter customer type and if you remember if you have gone through my lecture on get customer and get customer by id or uh, i mean both these methods action methods had the same name only to make a common view which returns the customer form and which could be posted back with the id to get the customer filtered with the id to get the particular specific customer with the id if the id exists okay so similarly for availing just one form for uh, saving us posting to another form to get uh, add a customer we are doing this okay is to use the same page right so we'll have to return a task of i action result so let's write here it will be starting with if model state dot
model state dot is valid i'll tell you that in a moment what is model state dot is valid property if model state is valid so what is model state so model state is the it gets the microsoft dot asp net core dot mvc dot model binding model state dictionary that contains the state of the model of and the model binding validation model binding validation means modding validation or is the server side validation which we are gradually adding which you have started with by doing the validation attributes in the previous lecture with system dot component model dot data annotation so now once the server side validation is fully in place it will create a model state dictionary and if the model state is valid then do this okay now briefly explaining the model state represents errors that come from two subsystems the model binding and model validations errors that originate from model binding are generally data conversion errors for example an x is entered in an integer field and model validation occurs after model binding and reports errors it reports errors model validation where data doesn't conform to the business rules like i said if an small x is if a character x is entered in the integer field or for example when a zero is entered in a field that expects a range between 1 and 5 so both model binding and model validation occur before the execution of a controller action or in razor pages it is a razor handler pages handler method okay so for web apps it is the apps responsibility to inspect model state dot is valid and react appropriately okay so then this model state dot is valid is true it's it's a is valid is a property that returns a model state dot is valid is a property that returns true if all the model properties are valid and returns false otherwise now then if model state is valid then create a using statement var http client any instance of an http client and then there is a type string content so i'll come to it in a bit the string content content json convert dot serialize object serialize the specific object to a json string so json convert operating on the serialize object method and this for this customer object and then I'll be using this overload. So this this has got three overloads: the um, string content. So I'll be using this one: string content and system dot text dot encoding, and then string media type. So encoding is encoding. dot now this one is actually it uses system dot text actually
using this system dot text names. This is now it's fine. So UTF-8 encoding I will be using, and media type is application front slash GSER. So I have created a content of type string content. Okay, so it provides an HTTP content based on a string. So this is a JSON string. So I've serialized the customer object, the input to the um, this method, add customer method. So that uh, I have converted using the JSON convert dot serialize object method, and the encoding is of UTF type and media is application slash json all right so next is our familiar piece of code using um, this one i'll copy this one this piece of code and then change accordingly if required right so var response is await on http client dot get async Instead of ID over here, this will now be the second parameter is content here. Okay, so this is the inner using statement. Now, this is a familiar code, isn't it? So, we get the response from the uh, content uh, which is read on which read as string async method is operated and this response so uh, it, this will be a post async method not a get because we have http post okay so we make it post async and now it's all right that squiggly line is gone so i get a response from posting a sync to this url on the web api passing the content json string which is formed over here and get the response and store it in a string okay and then convert this response which is returned from the web api by deserializing it to a customer object now below this outer using statement i will then return it i'll get the view returned with the customer if the model state is valid So, if the every validation is successful, the model validation, the, then return view customer, else return an empty view. Return view, return an empty view. All right. So, that's all. We have added, we have created the add customer. Uh, controller action method uh, HTTP GET and the HTTP POST type and in the next lecture we'll be adding the customer view okay we will get the add customer I mean view a CSS HTML page till then bye So I have flipped over to Visual Studio and I will click on add customer and render a view. So add view, render view empty, and I will make it, I will rename it as add customer. And get rid of all the code built in code and copy it from my 
clipboard okay so this is the view that will be ultimately generating rendering on the web browser so i'll just save it and here i will start explaining so the first part is the model directive at model directive this is a customer model and then this i have explained that this is the layout so this layout is coming from the shared view shared this is the layout okay so and from the view back it adds a title dynamically and add a customer and on this h2 header this will be actually rendering add a customer and this will be a back button so it will be going it taking it back to the index action method of this customer controller okay and with the bootstrap class of button button sm button secondary and then comes the form is formed over here which this html markup with the esp action add customer now here before i move any further you will see that there is a button type submit which adds the customer now when there is a submit button this by default post to a http post verb or http post method so it posts to this method method add customer which takes a customer input from the form now these special things you know asp action or asp validation summary or even asp for these are known as tag helpers so what are tag helpers tag helpers enable server side code to participate in creating and rendering html elements in razor files the tag helpers are authored in c sharp and they target html elements based on element name attribute name or parent tag Now they provide server-side attributes for the element. Now, for example, let's inspect this group, the email group. Now, each of the ASP for like the input ASP for label ASP for input ASP for these attributes. Now, the label and the input ASP for is marked with email within quotes. However, this email is not a string this is a context the email in this context the email is the c sharp model expression property for the customer model now here there is a asp validation summary now what this asp validation summary as the name suggests that this is also a validation summary which is also a tag helper and if this tag helper is applied to this div so that the validation errors will be shown as a summary on this element now this text danger class will give the text a red color okay now then these within these spans is the validation for these tag helpers are more useful to display the model validation message error message alongside the controls that contain the problematic data and this is achieved by simply putting the asp validation for tag helpers to the individual elements like for this address input this is put along side by side so that it gives the validation message when the form is validated submit to the server and this ASP validation for shows the error messages for the address property okay say for this this one now this is the part for the tag helpers which are now working which are going to work in tandem with the validation attributes for this customer class which we have already seen in the previous lecture these are the data annotation validation attributes now these two things act in tandem to give us the effect of server side validation which we will see okay and then let me complete the view explanation of this view now here this form group element add customer and method get it gets the empty form it brings up a 
it renders an empty form when you want to clear the form when you click this clear form button this is a submit button when it submits to the server it clears the form it gets an empty form and finally if the model is not null if the customer model is it brings up something some customer object back from the web api response and after deserialization then that is nicely put into a table with this table head and table headings name address telephone email and it gets the values from with at model dot the property name okay and this is a, again a c sharp code and finally once this part is this marked up is rendered it also shows to the browser that the customer is added it alerts the user that the customer is added and this is about the server side validation as well as uh, adding the customer view add customer view to the project so let's run this application to see our server side validation now the form is rendered and if i click on add customer and if i just click on this add customer button this and it will submit to the server let's see what happens so it gives us please put up name put address put a valid 10 digit telephone number okay so if i give it a name and so put some address please put a valid, valid 10 digit number seven eight nine ten and please put a valid email let's see it it adds the customer okay so if you look into the if you click on back the last customer is added over here so i have been able to show you this server side validation now this server side validation that i just showed is still not perfect because if you have careful you will straight away spot the spot that uh, asp validation summary is not working so what i did after a bit of a research and uh, i am still not clear how it solved this uh, uh, what i did was that i put this div class with text danger and ASP validation summary all outside this uh, form and put in its own div just below the header and now if you click the start button and if you click on click here and get all the customers if you click on add customer again and submit uh, the form with add customer without any form fields all with blank empty fields so you get this validation summary which is nice summary of all the individual elements or individual um, properties model properties validation so in this lecture we have seen how to do a server side validation by adding tag helpers which work in tandem with the validation attribute that we have seen Welcome guys. So in this lecture, we are going to add client side validations. So by the end of this lecture, we shall know how to add client side validations to the MVC client with jQuery packages and run the application to show, to show client side validation in action. So let's switch over to Visual Studio now. Now we have seen the validation attributes and the server side validation. So we have also seen that say, for example, we need to validate the name property whether the user has actually input the name or if the name property is not empty so we are able to easily achieve this by this required validation attribute now this is known as model validation as i have told you which is also the server side validation in conjunction with the you know asp.net core tag helpers now the model validation performs this validation on the server side which requires a round trip to the server but sometimes this is not preferable from the point of user experience as there is a time lag before the user gets the error message from the server it also 
weighs server resources for a simple validation. Now this is a simple case of client-side validation. The client-side validation can be performed in many ways and we can use JavaScript libraries like jQuery validation and JavaScript unobtrusive library and we can also write our own JavaScript or HTML5 built-in validation. So in this lecture we are going to use unobtrusive client-side validation. Now ASP.NET Core includes unobtrusive client-side validation library libraries which makes it easier to add client-side validation code without writing a single line of code. Okay, so here when I created this project Web API consume with the model view controller template, I already had this dub 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 root. It is the content root which you have discussed in detail in the one of the previous lectures. And we have got this lib folder which has got Java's jQuery, jQuery validation and jQuery validation unobtrusive folders which has got jQuery.js and jQuery.validate.js and jQuery.validate.unobtrusive.js Now these are the three packages absolutely important for us to perform the client-side validation. So let's see, I have, this is the layout folder, this is the layout uh, view. So layout view, I have included these three scripts javascript libraries this is jquery.js and this is jquery.validate.js and this is jquery.validate.unobtrusive.js and it is at most essential that you know these three are put you know placed in this order okay because jquery.validate.unobtrusive.js is built on top of jquery.validate.js okay which in turn is built on top of jquery.js okay now i have already loaded this so let's run this application it's all ready to go so let's click on the start menu so i have as i have mentioned in the beginning of this lecture that we have done the necessary plumbing for the client side validation while we integrated the server side validation so that's also the reason that we went for the server side validation before coming to this client side validation okay so click here now if i click on add customer and if we want to accept the empty form you would expect this validation nice validation summary will come along with the validation for each of these properties or fields okay so now if i put a name say for example anything test one so immediately it vanishes it disappears and that is client side validation and if i put on the address any address okay and as soon as i start writing something it will actually make the error message disappear and this is actually this telephone and email messages are coming from some regex you know regular expression validation so please put it 10 digit telephone number just to uh, simulate a 10 digit mobile number so let's do one. zero it's automatically gone and now if i don't put the email okay so if i Okay, I will show you. I will show you by putting an invalid email. So this field email must match the regular expression. This is the regular expression or regex expression for evaluating a proper email. Now, if I at this state, if I click on add customer, it will be doing the client side validation. So for client side validation, I have to still click the add customer button but how do i prove let me prove that this is still not a server side round trip it is a client side because if i um, click on f12 to bring the developer tools and if i click on network tab see nothing no request has been sent over the wire over the http server but if i continue and um, say complete this email field 
and then click on add customer and then if i click this network tab you will see that you know this is a status 200 a bootstrap on an all have got 200 status which is success the request is send over the server so http request so this is making a round trip so that in that case the server side validation takes over after the client side validation now how does the client side validation occurs at all so for showing this i have actually opened the page source for this page okay while this client validation is validating and you can see here if i just try to maximize it let me see if i can zoom it up for you to see okay yes i can zoom it probably a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more all right yeah we are fine now you can see that there are with these input labels you have got some data val attribute data val equals true data val required please put a name okay and similarly data val message for name data val message dash replace okay data val message dash for similarly for other fields we have data val property data val required data val message for like that so all these data attributes are part of the html5 which allows us to add extra information to the html element now this javascript unobtrusive library reads the data val attributes and performs the client side validation in the browser when the user submits the form so these validations are done before the form is sent over an http so if there is a validation error then the request will not be sent so we have already checked that by opening the network tab on the developer tools so in this lecture we have successfully demonstrated how to do the client side validation by including including a few javascript libraries so see you in the next lecture In the Visual Studio, I'll create an HTTP GET. I'll call the HTTP GET verb. And then I'll create a public async task. on i action result and call this update customer and provide it an int id id of type int okay this is very familiar signature for the action method now this one update customers get method is almost exactly similar to the content of the guest get customer http post method so i will copy everything why i will tell you in a bit so just copy this and paste here all right and there is no model state check here because I am just fetching a record with the HTTP GET verb for a particular ID that I have already passed by clicking on that record on a customer record where the ID is automatically embedded in that record. So basically what again just for refreshing, refreshment I am just initializing a new instance of a customer class and then calling the HTTP client initializing a instance of the HTTP client class and then using the HTTP client created over here and calling the get async method and passing the web API URL appending the ID to it and then receiving the response by reading from the response object response.content property dot 
read as string async so asynchronously i am reading the string and putting it assigning it to api response string and then i am just passing this api response string and deserializing it through json convert to cast it to a customer object and then returning the view with the customer object as a parameter so this is the update customer this is simple enough for the http get now comes the http post also HTTP post it is basically a very similar signature till this point whereas I enter a parameter ID parameter of int type here I will be entering the customer object okay because I have already got the customer object here in the get request so accordingly public async task on i action result again the same name with a different signature just a method overload so i am giving it customer with a name customer type i am feeding as parameter customer customer and then within the pair of curly braces i am just going to initialize another custom customer um, object of object of type customer and this time let me call this name this differently with received customer Here I have to definitely check model state, validity of the model state because this is a post request and I am going to check the model binding, you know, if the model state is valid because if I have to update, I can, I shouldn't be able to get away with uh, just passing empty string, or not writing anything or passing a different kind of data type or not complying to the validation attributes, okay. So model state, if it is valid, then using Now here it is a bit different the code here so I am initializing a var variable content which is of a new multi-part form data content this is here so it creates an instance of the multi form multi-part form data context content class all right so what is multi-part form data content now this is microsoft documentation and i have opened just to show you what is a multi-part form data content class now this content class multi-part form data content class provides a container for content encoded using multi-part slash form data mime types mime types okay so this is because we are actually dealing with form data so this all multi-part form data content does is provide methods to add required content disposition headers to content object added to the collection now if you look into another um, article dot add method because that will be using so this adds http content to a collection of http content objects that get serialized to multi-part form data mime types because we need to actually 
um, send the form data as a string and serialize it to JSON, which will be sent to the um, web API URL asynchronously to get the response back. That's all what we are doing. So we are using an instance of the multi-part form data content. Now the meaning will be further clear when I go to the next step. Now next is we'll be adding there is a content to this the add method to this content uh, multi-part form data content dot add method. Now what we can add there are several three overloads. One of them is HTTP context and con uh, HTTP context HTTP content and then string name and the third one is HTTP content string name and string file name. So I'll be using this second one HTTP content and the string name. So what is HTTP content? I will make use of new string content class. So string content class which we have used up here string content class okay creates a new instance of the string content class so here to the new string content i'll be using this overload first i'll have to form the string so i have been given this customer object so customer dot id dot to string to make it to string and then outside this one, this will be the ID. This will be the ID column, map to the ID column in the database, and then semicolon, and then copy it over. To add all the properties, So customer dot name, now name is itself a string, id was not string so it was explicitly cast to string, customer dot name and this is, this property is name, okay. And similarly customer dot address, And this field was exactly address. So here, this has to be mapped to the database. So that database column is also address with the same same spelling. So customer dot telephone and email that telephone dot telephone because these these fields are not only mapped to the database but they are mapped to the model first okay so because I'm going to create going to generate a JSON string which will be sent asynchronously to the web API and the return response will be deserialized to form the customer object so this needs to map with the customer properties customer class properties or customer model properties. So here this will be again the last one was email and within string it is the quotes email. Right and then within this outer using statement will be the inner using statement using var response so this part i will copy because this is very similar with the minor change to have a put async method instead of get async so var response equals await http client dot put async so update is a put put async and it's not 
kindly but this is passing the content okay so this is the content multi part form data content and then string response api response is the same response dot content dot read as string is sync which is the received response and then it is here it will be before putting this line this line will be the same but i will put something on the view back which is a dynamic object dynamic dictionary collection view back dot result if it comes to this point then result is success okay so, because i'll be checking this success parameter on the um, this view side when you go to the uh, this update customer view and then this was actually received customer received customer okay right so i am just outside the inner using loop outside the outer using loop and then outside the model state dot validity check then i'll return this return view with this customer object received received customer right and then build it and then run the application to show the result we are not actually um, able to show anything on the browser as yet so i will just leave it after building it control shift b because i don't have the view which i will build next in the next lecture and then i will show you the update in action so build started so you can see the build succeeded succeeded so everything is fine everything nothing is broken so in this lecture we have created the two different update customer one is the http get verb another is http post so next lecture we'll be proceeding further to create the update customer view to actually view after updating so i am into the update customer and i will add view because this will be an empty view so it doesn't matter whether i will use this update customer the top one the http get or the http post so i'll click on add reserve view empty and i will rename this as update customer update customer and this comes up with an empty template with some um, comments i'll get rid of that and instead i will copy it from my clipboard so from my memory on my clipboard i will just dump it because it's a huge amount of typing is involved which is unnecessary i believe and uh, i can explain each and every bit of it like i have done so far and then this is the model is at model directive is model is pointing to the customer model again and at the rate this is c sharp code layout is again the underscore layout in the shared layouts shared folder within the views and then the title i would like it to assume a title of update a customer so far so good and then in the h2 header this is update a customer this is the link with the asp action to index action method of the customer control customer controller if you click on this back link if you click on back all right and with this class button button sm btn secondary now start the form form tag with the method of post and i'll be posting on the update customer method okay so here is i have again introduced the asp validation summary all with the class of text ranger which will render it in red 
so if there is uh, when the ASP validation summary does come up and when it comes up when you actually um, leave something and post okay you click the submit button and then similarly these are the tag helpers this is also one tag helper this is a tag helper this is the tag helper for label can label ASP for that means this is for ID label for ID and input class this is the input box or the text box which also is the same class and this is the read only text box it has got ID okay so it is ASP for the ID property and then this is for the name property and then address in telephone and email with span ASP validation for this is the ASP this is uh, the span is kept basically to as in the case of uh, uh, add customer these are the validation error messages for the individual elements like name address telephone and email, email. so the rest is this is just a submit button as we have seen it and on clicking the submit button which is marked update customer with the text update customer it will be posted to the server it, it will be posting the contents of this action method update customer that is this update customer it will be posting to the server right and then if the view back dot result equals equals success i mean if it is a success which also comes from uh, this view back dot result equals success okay so this is view back is a dynamic property it gets the dynamic view back and if the result is success it is returned to the um, view and it is trapped with the c sharp code at the rate if view back dot result equals equals success because it is a if statement so it has it has to be comparing with this string success okay and then it creates on a table with table head and within the table row you have got all the table heading id name address telephone email much in the same way as the earlier views and it then renders the table body in individual table cells or table data within one single row it actually evaluates the id name address telephone and email properties of this model which is the customer model right so again um, it actually updates the database with the updated record for the customer and it actually that's it that's the way it renders the view so in this lecture we have seen how to create the update customer view and integrate the tag helpers for the validation on the server side and we have the client side validation which is already coming through jquery unobtrusive validation packages so let's see all of this in action now i think we are ready to click on the start button to run the application and update one record so both these application both these projects are rendered and api is running and i'll click here because the ability is running so let's see let's try to update any of these say the first one johnny rai chow i'll take this name out and update customer so it has updated the customer okay so if i click on back john rai but however if i get rid of this and click on update customer it will come up with a validation message and in the validation summary please put a name so as soon as i put a name uh, it vanishes and if i get rid of this address click on update customer please put an address now if i again bring the invoke the f12 
tools you know developer tools and on the network tab nothing is there and when i put an address over here and then click on update customer so immediately the request http request is sent through a round trip to the server now we'll have to write the verb over here and you'd expect can you just think for a second and tell me why it is going to be an http post verb post type of action so again the public async task of type i action result it returns and delete customer and give the id over there okay now again the same using statement now all familiar using var http client is an instance of the http client class and then a pair of angular a pair of curly braces and then again a using statement inside make use of http client object that you have created up now this time you are going to delete so this will be a delete asynchronous delete operation and we'll call again the same web api url so let me copy it from here So using var response equals await await on the HTTP client and then call the delete async method and then a pair of curly braces again the inner loop inner using statement uh, make use of this API this uh, response object that was returned as a result of making the delete async request on the web API URL so. I will just create a string again string api response now i have to await on response this i'll have to use this object that we have been uh, returned we have been given back from the web api request to the web api url so await response dot content now this is again and again repeated so i think by this time you might be quite familiar what this line of code does await response dot content dot read string async okay so what it does is the task object representing the asynchronous operation so it serializes the http content to a string as a asynchronous okay and then this part is over and the record by now is deleted already already so we have to now return back to the index action method why okay let me just write it and i will come back to this 
redirect to action okay index this is simply because it needs to be redirected to the index action method which will again list which will refresh the list and show the list of all the customers excluding the deleted customer okay so if we don't call this um, line if we don't write this line return redirect to action and modify the signature accordingly then what will happen that it will delete but it, it will the page will not be returned to the index the way that it should be shown i mean you need to go back to the index action method or index page or home page um, to show the list to view the list again the refreshed list the list without the customer that you have deleted all right so in this lecture we have actually done the uh, delete customer action method and there is going to be no delete customer view simply because the customer has already been deleted and there is nothing to show let's now run the application by clicking on the start icon So I've got these two applications, this is the MVC client and this is the API running and I click here again and this time if I delete, say this one, it will be immediately deleted. So we'll have to create the order controller for which actually I'll just contract this node web API because we are not going to work on web API anymore so here I have expanded the web API consume that is the MVC project our current project and I'll just clean it up a little bit so controllers model I'll just close all the uh, root level folders to make uh, it more cleaner so right click on the controllers and add controller MVC controller empty so click on add again it brings the add new with item wizard and I will make this order controller so basic order controller class is created which actually derives from the controller class so this controller base class, it's a base class for an MVC controller with view support. Okay. And then what I will do, I will just highlight all the using statements and control V from my clipboard, which has got all the essential stuff, essential uh, packages and libraries for this project to succeed. And then save it. And then I have to modify this i action result type to be actually it is a it's an async it will again be async task on i action result and it will have to return a view but a bit different way so what i will do i will just get rid of this return view statement and start writing list of order and I could call this orders or order list is my preference because this is a list of an order new list order with a pair of circular brackets and then the using statement new HTTP client now by now you might have been so familiar with the 
HTTP client class. So what this class does actually, so briefly telling if you right click on HTTP client class and go to definition, you'll see the metadata. So this class is derived from HTTP message invoker. It has got a public constructor HTTP client and then another constructor HTTP client with an HTTP message handler passed onto it and then another um, this um, of this public constructor okay so and it has got a base address which is which returns the type URI and it has got a timeout and it has got default request headers of type HTTP request headers and a little bit it has a few methods get string async and uh, so this is the base class and it has got a dispose method and it has got a send async post async put put async which will be very handy um, as you'll see in our uh, upcoming lectures so that's why this http client is a uh, highly used in this type of scenario where we need to actually interrogate or send an HTTP request over the network to a backend like in this case it's a web API. So following this using statement a pair of curly braces and again again a using statement is the almost the same that we have in a same blocks of code with slight modification from action method to action method and HTTP client have it on HTTP client actually let me call this HTTP client HTTP client now it's all right dot get async as we just saw that there is a get async method and here i need to be careful in getting the uri for my backend or web api so in order to see the web api what i will do is i'll open this node web api and i've already done that and open this launch settings from the properties so this launch setting gives me the ssl port as 44395 so this will be basically https colon front slash front slash localhost colon 44395 okay so having this opened on a different tab new vertical document type helps if you tend to forget and then let's close this to get more real estate. So this will be HTTPS colon front slash front slash and then this SSL port is 44395 which is what HTTPS stands for secured socket layer and uh, this is hypertext transfer protocol secure okay so this will be http colon localhost colon port number 44395 slash api slash order you have to be very careful about writing the proper uri otherwise you'll never get the you know um, any response from the web api if the url is wrong understandably so right so this is what it is get async and this is the request being sent over the net over the wire to the api to the order controller of the API. So we'll get back the response stream. Both cannot be 
response so api response string api response is await await on what the response that we got above response dot content so what is this content the content property gets the content of http response message okay gets or sets so in this case it is get dot again read as string async so read as string async means this is reading the actually uh, string that it got and serialize the http content as an asynchronous operation and then this order list will be actually now this order list is a list of order so this will be achieved from json convert dot again the same deserialize object deserializing the api response string to be cast as a list of order and then finally on this string you carry out this operation on this api response right and then same column to end the statement let me close this to get more space and then uh, outside the inner using statement out and i'm now quit the outer statement outer using statement as well and then i can i am in a position to return view with what return view with this order list which is a list of order order list order list object and then build the application with control shift b and the build succeeded okay and so in this lecture i have been able to initialize or create a order controller which derives from the controller base class that supports mvc views and i have created the index action method so again recalling for creating the index view for this index action method for the order controller we'll click on add view and go for reserve view empty click on add with the index.cshtml and then just get rid of the template code and then paste our own code for the index view of the order controller just like we did for the customer controller and this model actually it's a model on the strongly type order class i enumerable type of order okay so this is a list of order because we need a list of uh, orders through this return view order list so i enumerable is a actually a list type okay now again this is the same explanation holds good over here the layout file is the views shared and layout this is the layout file that it is referring to okay this is the layout file that we have created in the beginning and i have explained in another tutorial and then coming back to the index view again these are the action methods add order and get order and if you click the these are the links anchor these are links 
but with the class that makes it look like a button and uh, if you click this link it will take you to the add order action method of this order controller which we are yet to build which you are yet to code and you will be coding in upcoming lectures and also get order that's also an ASP action that means it is a controller action method for getting the order now again this table is made with a bootstrap class this is the class and it starts with a table head head section has got a table row and that has got several table headers with the id customer id description order cost update and delete these are for the two buttons update delete button and rest are the uh, you know order models properties you know id customer customer id description and order cost and then when the t body starts the table body that this model that is the i enumerable order of order is iterated to get a single order and each of the single orders id customer id description and order cost are written evaluated and written in these table cells you know table data or td or table cells okay now this customer id if you recall in the this was a foreign key from the customer table to the order table okay so i need to get the customer id also here for a particular order it has to be always attached to the customer a customer can have one or more orders but he may or may not have any orders at all but an order cannot exist without a customer and in this table cell the action method is update order with an update route of order dot id okay so the id or the primary key of the order table with an image which is whose source is at this icon edit dot png so if you look into this dub dub root column dub 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 root you have got this icon which has got a few images okay and then the last table data or table cell it actually calls the action method delete order and these two action methods we are going to write in an upcoming video and the method is post posted to the server to get the delete complete to get the delete action done by deleting a record so this is a post method it needs to be posted to the server and again it is a input type is hidden which stores the order id and i call this id which is named as id you could just write it order id or any other thing it doesn't matter so if you are naming it as id you have to pass it as an id the same name has to be given while you call the delete action method while you write the delete action method of the um, this order controller and then the input type is image type and the source is this icon closed on png and after the end of the table body we have got a final ahref this is the anchor which actually points to the customer class so if you click on this go to customer page link which looks again like a uh, button with the bootstrap class this btn btn sm btn primary it actually takes you from the order page to the customer page and that's it so we are now in a position to show the order table you know with the list of orders because i have fulfilled the necessary conditions of having that index action method for the order controller followed by the index view of this uh, corresponding to the index action method so clicking on the start button so you can see that the both the applications have started almost simultaneously so with the api running i click here and go to the order page i have no order so if i had some order corresponding to a customer 
it would have shown over here i can add order but that page is that is not functional so it will be made functional in the upcoming lecture so indent it a little bit and then below this index action method i will start writing the http get verb http get http get and below the attribute let's start writing public view result so it returns a view result because this is only expected to return an empty form you know get order form so get order and within the body of this all it does is to return a view which we are yet to create okay get order view now that was the get verb and now this is the once this form is available to the user and he fills he passes a, an order id and that is valid so then this will be post action post action will be called so http post verb is decorating this other method action method so public async again it will be a task of i action result type it's having this same method signature same method with a different overload with a different parameter that is that the first one the http get verb didn't accept any parameter that was an empty method and the this get order this is a post type it accepts a integer id parameter and now let's copy this and make some changes paste it over here and instead of a list i need just an order object an object of the order type or order class so order this is not a list order equals new new order so that's fine using var http client again to instantiate a new instance of http client type and where response http client dot get async at asynchronously call this uri plus append this id after this and this id is supplied by the input parameter of this action method so id and for this uri to work with id appended at the end of the order i have to put a front slash because it concatenates with the id and if i don't put this front slash then this will be actually a garble and so i have to put this front slash otherwise this api response will never be fetched the true response will never be fetched because we don't have the uri proper now string api response this line is the same await response dot content dot read as string async and then order instead of order list i will make use of this order object this is just a single order not a list json convert dot deserialize now this time it is just an order and not a list and pass this api response 
okay and then finally outside this uh, outer using statement i will return view and pass this order object that we retrieve and deserialize from the json string to make it an order class okay so return view order and that's about it so we are able to generate this action method or write this action method for get order get order get http get and i get order http post and let's build this application once again control shift b so the build succeeded that means we are fine we haven't broken anything and in the next lecture we'll be writing the view uh, for this get order action methods so that we can view the order with a particular id passed to it so clicking one of these two action methods will allow me to add a view click on add and call this get order and i got a get order dot cshtml and i'll get rid of this code auto generated code and then i will copy it from my clipboard and then explain so let me dump from my memory from the clipboard control v and so at the top again is the model which is the order order model or order class and then followed by the layout which points to the layout file on the views shared folder this is the layout file and then the view back dot title now this time this is get order by id okay so this is the title and layout and then again uh, the there's a link which is actually back which takes uh, the it back to the index action method okay and uh, you get the order by id but once you click on this back link then it will take you to the index page of the order which all the orders listed and then there is the form again it's a post method and it has got a label and an input to um, input for the users to input the id as a number and then the submit button okay submit button is get order and once when the uh, this request is submitted over the server and the server comes up with this result if the model is not null if an order is created you know if the order exists for that particular id then it is rendered through this markup you know a table is formed with a, this class you know bootstrap class with a table head and a table row with table header section having id customer id description and order cost and these are the properties of the order class okay and then you have got this individual uh, cells table cells or table data displaying uh, the id customer id description id and the order cost for the model with this notation at model dot id okay so at means again the c sharp code and this will be nicely placed in one row in different columns you know and finally the table body ends and the table ends and and that's about it so we are now in a position to run this application and see if we can get a order with a particular id okay so let's click on start to start the application now i have put both these screens side by side these are two different projects as you know this is the api running and once the api is running then you can again click here to view the customer it's taking to the customer and go to the order page and you've got this order with the order id of 2052 and a customer id this is the customer associated with this order so if you want to get the order by id so that will be the order id so i will search it by order id 2052 so 20 205 
so get order and you get this order with this customer id right so in this application i have shown you how to make the get order view and how to run the application and get to the order page and get the order by an order id and also get the customer id which is associated with this order so, so this order belongs to this customer the last but one more important thing to show here is if you click on back to go to the order page and you got this customer id 2060 now what happens if you delete this customer you should expect the order should also be deleted because this is cascade delete in the sql server you know this is referential integrity so let's go to the customer page and delete this customer so 2060 this is vladimir if i delete vladimir okay and then go to the order page so you don't have this order also so order also got deleted now this is coming from the uh, this uh, sql server i have opened this uh, sql server management studio with this um, project database web api db and here you can see if i expand this db.order node i've got this uh, foreign key order customer now if you want to script this you will uh, get what i'm saying this referential integrity stuff and new create a new query editor window so so here we have got an update case cascade or uh, on delete cascade so we want talk about uh, update case kit but we'll talk about the delete cascade in which you know if you delete a customer all the orders related with that customer one or multiple orders if he has will be automatically deleted as if that doesn't happen then you can have a an order or a number of orders multiple orders without a um, customer which doesn't make sense so i have put this on delete cascade okay hope this all makes sense and then i'll go for the models folder and get out this order.cs order model so i have to put this necessary library or with the using statement using system dot to remember from last time from the um, customer model that we have used a uh, certain using statement so if you recall it that's fine if you don't recall that's also all right so you can just revise your notes system dot component model dot data annotations okay now again briefly what are validation attributes so validation attributes let you specify validation rules for model properties okay so we will actually be specifying the rules for our order model so again we don't put any validation attribute for the id because id is required id is by default it's uh, it is non null it's a primary key and we will start with the customer id because customer id is required for a particular order so an order belong to particular customer so you have to fill this an error message is now you are at your liberty to put any error message that you deem fit or then that you like so i am putting my own put please put the customer id for this order all right and then for the description i'll just copy this part just bring it down a little paste it over there and please put a description please put some description and then for this uh, 
order cost first of all i'll have to put an error message with the required required field means that field is required you cannot just uh, not fill keep it blank and then submit to the server it will not accept it on the server side validation so for the order cost um, please put the order cost as a decimal let me prompt to the user so that he will know what type of uh, data type is the order cost you know bound to what kind of a data type he has to give okay so he sh uh, shouldn't be giving it uh, alphanumeric value or just an alphabetic value okay so please put that order cost as a decimal for this order and then i will finally enforce that statement you know by putting a regular expression which is this is the regular expression and this is the string so regular expression string it is preceded by at the rate and this is the beginning of the string and this is the this dollar sign is the end of the string this caret sign this is the caret sign and this is the beginning of the string and it basically says that you know you have to write something like decimal so backslash d means decimal dot decimal so it will accept two places of decimal i guess so we have done this uh, data annotation validation for the order model and we'll click on control shift b to build this application once just to see whether everything is fine again the build succeeds so we've been able to put data annotation validation attributes as a step towards the server side validation for the order model or order form so below the get order i'll have to write the add order http get and post now the easiest and the shortest way to write this is just go to the customer controller double click and open the customer controller put it beside the order controller in a new vertical document tab group and just copy and paste the relevant add customer methods http get and http post and then change wherever there is a customer just change it to order and that's it you're done so i'll just show you I think you get the idea. So here it is add customer. Exactly it will be add order method which returns a empty form or order form with the get request. When the request for this action method, you know, ASP action add order happens, it returns a order form to be filled for an order to be created. And similarly, HTTP post, let's copy this one and change the bits. Copy it, come back to here. You can now even close this tab and below the HTTP get method. You can make it HTTP post and where there is add customer, you make it add order. It's as simple as that. And this is order and this is order object instead of customer. And it is the smart way of doing things. Okay. So if model state dot is valid, blah, 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 var HTTP client equals new HTTP client. So I'll have to replace this with order which is given to me given to this action method through the parameter and this part is the same encoding is utf8 in the application fun slash json and then here also instead of the uri should go to the point to the order okay with o capital now this part you might keep the front slash or 
you may omit this front slash it doesn't matter because this is not concatenation this is you can try it we'll try it while we are we browse to this uri that you know whether you put a front slash after the um controller and if it is not appended with any id or anything then it's all right and this is not an appending this is just a second parameter to this post async action method action method so this is order again and instead of customer order type and also i will get a return view of order order so if the model state is not valid then return view empty okay otherwise return view with the order object found over there it's as simple as that i think we have already explained it many times so i am just leaving it to you to revise the things and if you have any questions put it in the discussion forums so we'll build this um, application again at the moment you cannot see any functionality because i have to add the view add order view also to be able to show you how the order is added to the database so build is succeeded so in this lecture i have been able to i mean create the add order action methods for http get and http post verb So I'm into the order controller and I can click any of these order action methods, get an or post to create an empty view and name it add order. So click on add view. Is the view empty? Click on add. Get the add new item with the project name. and then change it to add order click on add and this adds an add order dot csstml file this is the razor file you can say or view file rather view file So Razor file has also got a CSS HTML extension. So I get rid of the default code, and I just paste the code from my clipboard. So in here, I paste the code from the clipboard, and then I can I can start explaining once more the way I explain the add customer view. So at the top is again the page directive, the model directive, which is pointing to the order model okay and the next line is a layout again now this layout is again pointing to views shared and layout file and then i am actually writing on the dynamic view back okay which gets a dynamic view data dictionary add an order and next is a, within the h2 header we have got an add an order is rendered onto the browser with an back link with an asp action which is index so if you click on the back link which has got this style button style that makes it almost resemble like a button and when you click this back it will post to the index action method of this order controller and then comes the form which invokes the add order action method with a post request with a post http verb and following that is the asp validation summary within a div which is a, and these are all tag helpers so what is a tag helper again just to refresh our memory once again tag helpers enable server side code to participate in creating and rendering html elements in razor files or view files now tag helpers are authored in c sharp and they target html elements based on element name mainly element name but additionally 
attribute name or parent tag. They provide server side attributes for the elements. Okay, so like here, label is before or even on top for the customer ID. These are all tag helpers which are actually marked in dark violet or um, this is uh, I think seems like dark magenta color okay so now this ASP validation summary it's put on the top as the name suggests this tag helper is applied to the div so the validation errors are shown on this element and it shows the validation as a summary okay now this takes danger class actually brings the uh, font in red it gives red color to the text now displaying individual validation messages with ASP validation for tag helper is useful to display the model validation error messages alongside controls that contain the problematic data this you can achieve by using the ASP validation for that's what they are for and this ASP validation for is usually put in this span and in span tag and then following the uh, I mean different sections of div with different form groups groups corresponding to each of the properties of this order class we have got this uh, submit button and if you click this submit button add order it will post to the server and it will actually invoke the post action order post action method add order post so which we, we have already seen in the last lecture add order it will be posted to the add order action method okay and then when you click the clear form button there is a clear form button which i have shown so it will invoke the add order the get method so it will actually bring an empty form with this submit button okay and these are the bootstrap classes again and this will bring the result on the view back but actually this is not of much use I can get rid of this now if the model is not null so if the API response bring an object of order type which is not null then it nicely comes to this side and it creates a table with this class which has got a table head that has got a table row with several three um, this table heading section which has got all the properties like customer ID description and order cost and after that a table body is formed and it evaluates the customer ID description and orders order cost and renders it on the browser okay so we have seen that the add order works how the add order works how the add order is formed for this order controller add order action method so let's now click on the start icon to run the application so with the both the applications running i click on click here so i've got just got one customer and if i go to the order page let's remember this customer id is 3061 go to the order page and add an order customer ID was 3061 if you remember 3061 and let's see any description this is a test and say 200.89 click on add order and it adds the order okay so if you click the clear form and go back it clears the form and if you go back you've got this order which automatically the ID is generated from the database with this customer 3061 okay so this marks the end of this lecture where we have seen how to create an add order view
so click the start button to start the application now both the projects have rendered on the browser and api is running and if i click here it will bring up the customer and if i go to the order page so i've got just one order if i click on add order now here let me just uh, click on add order to see the validation so this is the validation summary asp validation summary it comes from the validation summary tag helper and you have to give some customer id description and if you give some customer id whether it is available or not it doesn't matter i want to show you the validation so you give it any number and it will just get removed that error message is no more it disappears and it gives a description say test description and that you know error model error gets removed now if you first i will show you the client validation you know if you click on order you still need to actually click this add order button and go for the developer tools f12 so when you click on this network tab it's already highlighted so there is no http request sent over the wire so there is no so even when we had to click the add order button it actually didn't make a round trip from the server okay now if we click the order amount anything and if we click on add order let's see what happened so it is you know some request is being sent okay over the wire so this is no more a client side validation this is a server side validation okay right and okay you can see this <laughs> right now if we go back if you just close this tab again and if you go back you get a customer id 3061 and if you click add order again put this valid customer id 3061 and say again no description and click on add order it will bring these validation checks error messages and if you put some description test okay so it disappears due to client side validation and if you click on add order again so this doesn't get disappeared because i have not put any amount so it is or this is required and please put the order cost as a decimal for this order and if you just click the f12 tools bring up the f12 you will see that on the network tab even if i click on add order nothing is sent over the network so if i now put the amount and click on order so this is sent now this is status uh, is 200 status okay okay so this is all right now this order is added successfully so i have shown you both the client side as well as the server side validation for the order form user inputs so i have got this order controller in front of me and the easiest way like we did for the add order action methods we just copied the um, add customer and add customer method on the order controller and then change the bits to make it add order you know action methods http get and post so accordingly we will do it this way this is the easiest and smartest way i guess there is no harm in actually doing this way so long as your application works and it saves a lot of time typing all right so having said that let's click on the customer controller and take these two methods for update customer uh, http get and update customer http post from here till this point copy it go back to order controller so after the add order action method I just stick it up there and then we have got update customer so we'll make it update order
with an int id and then this is the order class so this will be order 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 object is order equals new order right and then make the required changes over here so response will be this localhost colon port slash api slash order again with an id appended this is the id that was entered to the given to the action method as a parameter and then instead of customer here will be order so and instead of customer again so i am converting i am deserializing the to get the order back from the json response all right and then return view order so that's the get view so what it does is that you know it creates a new order instance and it actually gets asynchronously the response with the id of the order for that id for the order and once it gets the response it reads it as an asynchronous string and stores in in a string and then it deserializes the json response to get the order object and then it returns the order okay so it is quite simple this way so now again update order so this time this is posted to the server with the http post request and this is order object again and order and this is a order type received order equals new order so this is the received out of the web api request or web api response you know that's the received order after the you know uh, after this put async method is called so here again it will be it will not be the customer dot id dot to string it will be the order this will take the received order or this will be the actually the order that is supplied to this update order action method as a parameter so here it will be order dot the so order parameter dot id dot to string and then id and then this was customer id so again order you don't need to remember anything because order if you write dot order dot customer id and get rid of this name and call this customer id okay this is the customer id dot to string so this is an id so i have to make it to the string and call this customer id this is a foreign key on the order table okay for one to many relationship and then content dot add again order so all the fields need to be you know bring to the fore to get the new string content so id customer id and then description description field we call this just plain description description and then order dot finally let's see you don't need to remember anything order dot order cost so customer id description id and order cost order cost is the one remaining and call this order cost actually 
description I'll make it description not because dot to string again to string to make it to string and then this is called order cost all right and there is no email field so just get rid of this last line of the code and just bring it a bit up to indent all right so var response equals await http client that put async api slash order and pass this as a second parameter this content you know which we have added in these lines of code in this line of code from the order that order object that was supplied as a parameter to this method and then um this part has been taken care of and received customer rather received order so received order automatically comes on the intelligence and then make this order and then api response and then received order again received order and that's all done and then just build this application once more with control shift and b so build has started it's still in the process of building and build succeeded okay so we have been able to put in place the update order and you know pass the order id by the user on the http get request and it is posted back to the server and we are going to get the order details if there is one okay so in this lecture we have created the update order get and post action methods so i've got the order controller in front of me and right click and add view razor view empty add and call this update order and then like we have done we are going to get rid of the default code and paste our own code taken into the clipboard okay so this is the code now this is the model is order at the top and then the layout is as usual in just like in all the views without any exception the layout file is pointing to this view shared layout file and then the view back dot title update and order and this is another link to go back to the action method index action method for the this order controller page and with form method then the form starts forming over there with the method of post and and it invokes the update order action method and this is a validation summary i have introduced just like we have done it to add customer okay or um, like add order also so we have um like we have done it for update customer we also have ASP validation summary for uh, I mean summarizing all the validation errors at one place nicely and this will have another form group one form group each for each of these divisions each of these divs and we have got the label and the input class input is ASP for this is a tag helper these are all tag helpers and basically these are the tag helpers we are interested in for span asp validation for these are the span tags to write the error message if there is a i mean error 
so it has got a class text test danger which writes it in dark red for a warning and then there is a button type submit button again when you click on the update order button it will submit to the server it will post the form and invoke the action method update order okay now these uh, these are the tag helpers as i just told so asp4 asp4 is the tag helper for you know pointing to the element corresponding element id and this is asp4 id for the input and similarly asp for the customer id and asp for the customer id for label as well as the input and now then these tag helpers enable server side code to participate in the creating and rendering html elements in the razor files and tag helpers are authored in c sharp and they target html elements based on element name attribute or parent tag and if you take any specific form group here this asp4 asp dash attributes has a value of say description but description here although it is within double quotes it's not a string in this context this description is the c sharp model expression property for the this order model okay descriptions and similarly the order cost and finally if view back dot result equals equals success which comes from this dynamically created view back here if you get the response back from the put async method to the web api url and if it is able to read an api response as an asynchronous string then we put a view back dot result as success okay so here this success is trapped so if view back dot result equals equals success that means when it comes to this point only this will write view back dot result equals equals success and in that case that means it is not null and uh, it will form the table with table heading and table row with table header customer id description order cost all the properties of the um, order class order model and it will form the t body or table body with one table row having table columns you know to which evaluates the model cus customer id description and other properties and then the table ends and that's about it so now let's click on start to start the application and we'll see the validation in action so both the applications are now running they have come up and rendered on the browser and click here and go to the order page let me try to update this order so let's write instead of test let's just write, try to write test test and update the order so it has updated successfully test test and if you go back to the order page it has come up with test test okay so i am able to update and if you click on add order click on a customer id say back see a customer id is 3061 and then you don't fill it, the other two forms other two fields description and order amount and then click on add order so this validation summary comes up with please put some description please put the order cost as a decimal for this order okay so if you bring up this f12 um, developer tools you see that network tab is empty so even though you have clicked the you have submit button which has got a submit action this add order there is no round trip to the server so it has been trapped at the client side itself and if you write this is a test you give it some order amount click on add order then this is transmitted 
nicely across the network through HTTP request and you got a status response through 200 response OK. So we have got this client side validation as well as server side validation working. The, both the client side as well as the server side use the validation attributes in the model as well as this tag helpers together and this client side validation requires jQuery unobtrusive which we have introduced earlier in my client validation lecture on customer controller. So in this lecture we have created an update um, order view and we have demonstrated the application in running condition with client side and server side validations. Now below this update order, I will start writing the delete order. Okay, so let's get going. So we'll be using the HTTP POST operation. There could be an HTTP DELETE operation also, but it requires an confirmed delete form, which we I am not doing in this instance because I just want to delete a record on which the delete button is clicked. So this application is designed in a manner that it doesn't ask for confirmation whether you want to delete or not. Okay, because this is there are some other. Um, important functionalities that needs to more stress than this delete confirmation. So let's get going with the public async task on i action result delete order for a particular order with an int integer id so again this is a short one so i'm just going to write using Our response again the same piece of code await till now and here I will call the delete async method to delete it asynchronously okay and then this URL I am copying it from up above this uh, update order method it also has to append this id and inside the method here this was git async and i am now calling the delete async method and i am just copying this url which i need to paste over here okay and then API responses await response dot content read as string async now here in this case i don't need to cast it to an order object or deserialize anything because you know this record is already deleted from the database and it is not shown and it doesn't need to be deserialized back to an order object and lastly it has to be returned to redirect to the index page 
return redirect to action index action name index okay index action index action of the um, this order controller so that's it basically and if everything is all right i'll run and i'll be able to delete a record order record okay now then when i click here it comes up with the customer page and if i go to the order page if i click any of these order it should be deleting so this order is deleted I click on delete for this order this is also deleted okay so my delete action method is working so i'm able to delete a, an order all right so in this lecture we have seen how to write a delete action method and it's working by running the application so that marks the end of this MVC client, which now is over. The entire project is over, both the sections. Hope you have enjoyed this project and let's see what next.